FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's July 28th, 2017. Still in Vancouver, getting ready to leave. Just wanted to touch base with you again before. We've got a lot of good interviews coming up with people from the conference. Guys like Andy Schechtman, Mickey Fulp was there, and a whole bunch of others. So, But in the meantime, I wanted to do another Triple Lutz report. This is number 421. Well, as you probably heard by now, the whole Obamacare replacement effort is kaput, supposedly. I'm not convinced that it's over yet, but we will see. It was dealt a blow, 49 in favor, and 51 against. If it had been 50-50, Vice President Pence would have cast the tie-breaking vote, and whatever was going to happen was going to happen. But guess who voted against the Obamacare replacement? None other than John McCain. Like I said, when the fate of the Republic is riding on John McCain's brain, you know we're all in trouble. And this guy is just the worst warmonger, idiot, really not a very bright person, real anger management issues, just not real with it, doesn't understand what's happening, and unfortunately he's sick now, will probably result in uh, his demise sooner rather than later. That's a shame from a human standpoint, but this guy caused more pain, suffering, more wars out there, always in favor of using the military option, whether it was necessary or not. So the question is, where are they going to go next? Well, we know that 20 out of 24 Obamacare exchanges have collapsed. Uh, They have gone out of business. These are these nonprofit groups that were uh, going to provide health care to the terminally sick, to the chronically ill, people with pre-existing conditions. It failed so quickly that you couldn't even believe it. And, you know, kind of, kind of uh, ashamed. You got to put the people who are sick with pre-existing conditions onto Medicare. I'm afraid that's the way to do it because uh, this thing is not working. So, what happened? There were three of them who rebelled. Basically, McCain was number one. Um, Susan Collins was number two. And I can't remember the Linda Murkowski from uh, Alaska was number three. And maybe uh, they just openly defied Trump because uh, they could get away with it. The rest of them had to toe the line. But uh, I think uh, Murkowski's going to have a problem in her next election. Susan Collins is from Maine. Nothing is going to happen there. Let's face it. Uh, On other news, $1.6 billion is going into building the wall. As we found out and we suspected all along, the wall isn't necessary along the whole 2,000-mile Mexican-American border. Uh, It's needed in a few key choke points. So no $20 billion wall, but it was a good campaign play. It worked quite well. You know, it just, uh, this is reality as opposed to campaigns and politics. But the fact of the matter is, the illegal traffic over the border, by some accounts, is down 70%. And that's because there's no longer an outstretched hand by the administration. Trump has unleashed the Border Patrol and ICE to round up criminal aliens and ship them back to where they came from, uh, you know, look, we just can't afford to pay welfare to every single foreign person who wants to come to the country. They're finding this out in Europe now with the so-called refugee crisis, which if those guys are refugees, then I don't know what, but I'll tell you what, 
You just can't have anybody come here. And what you really want to have is people who are going to contribute to the well-being and the prosperity of the country, right? I mean, that's really what it's about. Um, that's Those are the people we want to come to the United States. We don't want people who are going to be parasites. we got enough parasites in this country now, both homegrown and imported. Something like over 40% of the people who've immigrated uh, to the U.S., legally are on welfare. Now, it's all great for labor, uh, for companies that want cheap labor. You know, this is wonderful. But for you and I, who got to hire legal people, what's the best way to do it? And what I've come to realize is that Zip Recruiter is the best place to go to hire somebody, best place where you go to post your job to find the best candidates. And like I said, Probably with uh, less foreigners, illegal aliens coming to the U.S., the labor market's going to contract, get tighter. So, hey, ZipRecruiter, if you're looking to hire, it really is the best place to post your job. With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to 100-plus job sites with with just a click. Uh, Their powerful technology matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. And that's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend upon candidates finding you. ZipRecruiter actually finds the candidates for you. And did you know that over 80% of the jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours, sometimes even less. You don't have to juggle emails or calls to your office anymore. I remember when I had my printing company and we had tight job markets, I should say job markets where there was a lot of unemployment, uh, you know, the economy wasn't great. I'd put it in the paper. I would get 200 resumes faxed to me right away. But you know, now with the internet zip recruiter, it's the coolest thing. You just go to your dashboard, you simply review, screen, rate, manage candidates all in one place. It, it's remarkable. And if and when I need an employee next time, I'm going to go use zip recruiter. So if you want to find out today why zip recruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes, shapes, industries to find the most qualified job candidates with the almost immediate result, you can go over to ZipRecruiter and post jobs for free. Isn't that amazing? Just go over to ZipRecruiter.com, post your jobs for free. Simple. ZipRecruiter.com slash Lutz, L-U-T-Z. ZipRecruiter.com slash Lutz. Look, you got nothing to lose here but your job vacancies. Isn't it worth going over to ZipRecruiter.com slash Lutz? Post your jobs for free today and get started right now. So getting back here to what's happening in the country, we go over to tax reform now. Now, if there's anything every congressman can agree upon, there's two things, basically. When it comes to spending money, they're all fit in favor of it. When it comes to saving money, not so much. And when it comes to cutting taxes and giving presents to their constituents, you can always count on the U.S. Congress to do the wrong thing. Basically, there are a bunch of criminals, hacks, thieves. There might be a few good ones out there. You know, at least they're not murderers and rapists like the people coming over the border, according to Trump, right? So I guess we should be grateful for that. Uh, This Maxine Waters is a nut job. Uh, How anyone takes her seriously. She's voted the fourth most corrupt member of Congress a number of years ago. Uh, Her husband's profited from her interfering with banks and other chicanery that she's engaged in and she's not very bright i remember the time she was denouncing the banks and there was one called solomon smith barney frank at least that's what she called it it was solomon smith barney but she called it solomon smith barney frank and it's just hysterical the woman is dense stupid and what's she gonna do you know she'll have to get out of there at some point so you know uh, country's in bad shape right now, and we're unable to come together. There's nobody that can really unite us. You know, maybe if we were attacked tomorrow, we could come together, but I tend to doubt it. So there was a couple in uh, in New York who jumped to their deaths. Uh, supposedly, they were parents struggling to pay their doctor's bills, and they left double suicide notes pleading that their two kids be cared for. I mean, 
One was 53 years old. The woman was 50 and claimed they had a wonderful life. And boom, they just jump out of the window, 33rd Street, by Park and Madison Avenue's section of town called Murray Hill. And you know, you got to wonder, I mean, how do you leave your kids like orphaned like that? That's just the worst thing. I think there's more to it going on than that, than just health care. You know, I don't suspect foul play, no conspiracy theories here. Just extremely, extremely sad. So look, the um, it's all over the world here. Pakistan's prime minister, this guy Sharif, he's just removed after a corruption probe finds Imagine that, a crooked politician. I thought the U.S. had a monopoly on them. Uh, But, you know, it's really, really just sad. Uh, The state of the world, Russia's retaliating against U.S. sanctions. The Congress just seems intent upon really provoking Russia into some type of confrontation. What the heck is this all about? And, you know, this is is madness. So... uh, Listen to this, de Blasio, moron, stupid, idiot, self-unaware, has no idea of the way he's perceived by people, or maybe he just doesn't care. Politicians can develop that knack. But transit officials are investigating why a packed subway train was delayed by a news conference that de Blasio held in the station. I mean, this is outrageous. He called uh, Joe Loda, who once upon a time ran against de Blasio, comrade de Blasio for mayor last time, called the apparent special treatment unacceptable, saying no one should stop a train for a single individual to get on. Now look, I mean, the damn thing is crumbling. That's why he's having the conference, the press conference in the first place in the station. But to exacerbate the situation, to make it worse, is lunacy. I mean, what is this guy thinking? Like, hey, stop the trains until I am done with my press conference, and then you can get to work. I mean, really, come on, this is lunacy. And You know, of course, they're denying it, but an MTA official told the New York Post, which this article's from, that the agency confirmed that the train was held at the station for a police check. So the guy is supposed to be trying to make things better with the city's uh, crumbling mass transit. And what does he do? He ties people up on their way to work. I mean, oh man, I would be livid, and I'm sure everybody on that train, if you were on there, you would be livid as well. So here's an interesting article. The, a Chinese billionaire got convicted of paying bribes to UN officials, including General Assembly President John Ash, who was the guy who died of exercise-induced, uh, basically a barbell. He dropped it when he was working out, and it fell on his neck. I mean, ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Ash died ahead of the trial after a barbell fell on his neck while he was working out in his Westchester home. I believe that. Supposedly, this has Clinton's written all over it, and that could very well explain uh, why people just seem to perish before their time. <laughs> when the Clintons have any involvement whatsoever. Uh, don't be surprised to see more of them. I'm surprised this guy's still alive. Obviously, he's not talking, right? I mean, is that the case or what? Um, so anyways, um, the U.S. second quarter saw a supposed growth rate of 2.6%. Trumponomics is working. Uh, he's getting a $10 billion Foxconn factory built in Wisconsin, and they're going to expand it. It's going to be thousands of jobs. I think where you're seeing like industrial production up, factories reopening, it's not going to do any good for the automakers, though. That's unfortunate. We've hit the peak in auto production. I don't know how it goes up from here. Real estate looks like it's peaking. Look, if we don't get tax cuts, we're heading for a recession for sure. I think this number is probably just an anomaly. Oh, hey, by the way, don't forget, email me, KL at kerrylutz.com. Uh, our Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. Our Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. And uh, we'll be wrapping up in Vancouver early this morning, taking off, spending a day just to myself, probably in Seattle, but maybe here in uh, Vancouver. I don't know yet. Just having some fun. But remember, none of this is, should have any effect on your internal state of happiness, whether they pass health care or not. What I've realized is the key is 
Happiness in life is all a matter of managing your state, your internal state of mind. Nothing is really upsetting in and of itself, except perhaps illness, death of a loved one. But outside of that, your state of mind is really up to you. How you react to things, how you handle things, your kids, your parents, whatever it is, it all comes down to your state of mind, managing your state. And you can get through anything, literally anything, if you properly manage your state of mind. Really, really what life is about, in my humble opinion here, and I won't claim to know everything, I don't for sure, but I do know that when I'm conscious of my state of mind and I don't let it control me, I do my best to maintain it and keep it going. Life is so much better. One of the ways I've done it, I don't know if I've shared this with you or not, but I started meditating almost two years ago daily, and it's made such a big difference. The beauty of calm in one's life, the beauty of tranquility, of not feeling like you're constantly under the gun and that everyone's kind of out to get you, which they probably are anyway, but that's the inner paranoid in me speaking, really has made all the difference in my life. It's made me a happier person, and I think it's made me a better person, both to my family, my friends, to you, the FSN community, and most importantly, to myself. So the point is, and I don't want to get into a whole philosophy discussion here, but don't let the nonsense of the exterior world affect your inner sense of well-being, peace, and tranquility, and happiness. Every day is a gift. That's the way I treat it. And every one of you listening to me now is a gift that I'll never be able to repay. It's changed my life. It's made everything worth so much more. Regardless, you know, I'm one of thousands of people doing this. I met a guy at the show here, Ellis Martin. He's been doing it for 20 years. And we were like, hit it off instantaneously. You'll hear an interview that I did with him. Just a wonderful person, uh, really a professional at this, really gets it. I mean, look, I, I don't mind that not everybody's a professional. When I started out at this, I wasn't a professional. I really had not a clue what I was doing. But you know what? I just kept doing it. I treated it like it was a profession and that I wanted to become a professional. And when I see guys like Ellis Martin, who really give it 100%, who are so good at this, it makes me happy. It makes me feel like there's a community out there, not just of people like Ellis and myself, but people like you who support us, who really help us connect, build audiences, send emails, however you do it, go to the website. You know, I really appreciate you for helping me to become the person that I am. And when I see other people doing it, like Ellis, it's really gratifying. There's nothing else in the world I'd rather be doing. I mean, I told you so many times, I thought, well, maybe I'll sell real estate, I'll sell cars, because I don't know if I can make it in this podcasting. And yet here I am, six years later, the thought of doing something else uh, just really, it has no effect upon me at this point. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing than, than informing you, than telling you, sharing my travails, my experiences, examining economic trends, all that. I know it's a little belated, but this is my seventh year of doing this, and it's been seven years of incredible luck and just incredible joy and happiness, and I wouldn't be able to do it but for you. Even if there were only 10 of you out there listening, I'd still be doing it. But the fact that there's thousands of you listening to this just gives me such gratification, such fulfillment, such happiness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. We'll be back in Florida next week. Schedule is a little sporadic. I'm moving my house again. That's a whole long story I'll get into with you later. I don't want to bore you with the details, but... Uh, we're going to keep producing the best possible shows we can for you. And again, email me, kl at kerrylutz.com, Facebook page, Financial Survival Network, Twitter feed, at Kerry Lutz. Hey, we'll be back again. This has been another Triple Lutz Report. Kerry Lutz, signing off. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.